Now let's move over to Abuja where we have uh, Femi Adishino, he's the senior assistant on uh, media and publicity to President Muhammad Buhari. Good morning and thanks for joining us on a lovely Friday that Nigerians will say it's a lucky Friday. How do you feel now with this release to start with? Well, <clears throat> I feel elated, quite happy, and uh, I rejoice with humanity, with Nigeria, with Chibok, with the girls, with the parents, with everybody in general. I think it's a good day. Is it actually a release or a rescue? It's a release. There is a difference between release and rescue. It's a release. A release that came after discussions, after negotiations. As we heard the Minister of Information say yesterday, it was a release to build confidence between the two parties, to show faith between the two parties. It's just one step that will be followed by many others. You know, definitely when they talk about discussions and negotiations, there must be give and take. What did we give? to get this? Yes, I have heard and read uh, so much about what we gave and what we didn't give. Since we were not there, since it was a security matter, we've just got to believe the report that the security people gave. And what they have told us is that we didn't give anything, that this is just a confidence-building th thing. It's a confi confidence-building step that will lead to bigger things. So, we have been told that we didn't give anything, and I believe, and I think we should believe those who have told us so. You know, it will be very hard for Nigerians to believe that, uh, knowing full well that this is not the first time we've had discussions with a group. We've always had a series of discussions, and all of a sudden we're getting to see this one yielding some fruit. What changed? Yes, there is the saying that uh, to those who believe, no explanation is necessary. But to those who don't believe, no explanation is possible. So, I choose to be among those who believe, and no explanation is necessary. I just believe. Well, uh, for those who still need explanation, for instance, the, the empiricists, and they will want mm -hmm. you to go further and tell them what exactly, because truly what changed mm -hmm. is, is what Nigerians will be asking. We have always had discussions, sometimes failed discussions, some other times, you know, in a hush, hush tones. But this one came upon us just like a surprise. Perhaps you just might want to tell us what changed in this very yeah. negotiation. I, I, I believe it's a matter of confidence. In the past, uh, there had been many of, of such meetings that will have led to releases, but along the line, um, discussions broke down. Maybe because uh, the confidence was, was not quite solid, particularly from the side uh, of the Boko Haram. But now, I, I, I believe that they, they trust the government, they trust those who they have been discussing with. Don't forget that a foreign country was involved, and uh, maybe they trust the process, and they believe that if they do this as a show of their trust and faith and belief, then subsequently maybe some things will happen. But for now, what we have been told is that there was no swap, and the girls were released just as a show of faith, a confidence-building measure. And uh, I think it's good enough for us to believe. Don't forget we have, as you rightly said, we have two other key organizations, two bodies, a country and an international organization, the Red Cross and the Swiss government, that were also part of this uh, negotiation and success. What if tomorrow comes and you get to see in the publication that truly four commanders of uh, Boko Haram, as we have seen in some news media, were, you know, exchanged for this 21. One, uh, the onus is on those who have published that report to also prove it. The onus is not on government who said there was no swap. 
to defend his position. No, the onus is on those who are alleging to prove that there was indeed a swap and that four commanders were released. They need to substantiate it. Anybody can wake up and say 20, 30, 40 commanders were swapped for the girls. It's so easy to say. It's so easy to conjecture. But let's have the evidence. The onus is on them to prove it. It's almost 24 hours since they have returned. Uh, have uh, you gotten any word about the whereabouts of the others from these girls? Yeah, you, you know that the girls um, came back yesterday morning and like the government has said, they need to be treated to psychological reconditioning, they need to be treated to medical reconditioning, you need to get them supplies, change their clothes, do all sorts of things, reunite them with their parents. There is a lot to do before you begin to debrief them. You don't get them immediately and then you begin to debrief them immediately as to where the others are. If you look at the names of those released, and uh, it would seem as if it was uh, a targeted operation on the school. Uh, in the tr uh, looking at a list of 21 that have returned, almost everyone there seemed to be uh, people of other faith and religion. Could this possibly be one of the reasons, truly, that Boko Haram went out for these people and uh, say they want to change the faith of these? young ones well um, Boko Haram will be the one to say yes or no to that but we also know that Chibok is largely a Christian community and then it stands to reason that most of the girls possibly 85 or 90 percent of them will be Christians because it's a Christian community and that that school will draw most of uh, the students from within the community. But as to whether it was a deliberate target, uh, we can only get the truth of that from the insurgents. Because by now we thought uh, we should have been able to get uh, that. They've been out for almost uh, for over two years now, and the security agents uh, or agencies should have been giving the government, uh, which you are now part of, some. Uh, inkling or idea if not information as to why this happened but have you had discussions with any of them don't forget that we had uh, the inkeki lady that was uh, rescued in may by now nigerians uh, are hoping that the government have opened discussions with these young girls uh, to have an idea of what form of life they are living in captivity Yes, you, 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 you can be sure that that has been done, but then uh, it's not declassified yet because that likely will be done by the security agencies, particularly the Office of the National Security Advisor. So until they then uh, declassify the information they get from her, it, it's not something that is in the public domain yet. But has it been done? Yes, it has been done. What's the faith of the others yet to be released? As we have been told, this is just uh, one, 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 one first step. One first step, which I also call a giant leap for humanity. But then um, it's the beginning of many more good things to come. This is just a show of faith, a confidence-building process between Boko Haram and those that are negotiating on behalf of Nigeria. You can be sure that there will be many more releases. In How many badges, I do not know, but there will be many more releases. And uh, as many of the girls that are alive will definitely return to their parents. You know, this return is very key here. That's why we have to stay on this and talk about uh, those that are yet to be reunited with their families. Uh, and again, tell us, uh, those who have come up with these negotiations on, between the government and the group, uh, the Swiss government and the Red Cross, are there Nigerians amongst them? Oh, na naturally, it has to be a variegated um, uh, uh, assemblage because 
Nigerians are the ones who know the issues at stake. Foreigners can come and they, it's a complete foreign team. They don't even understand what the issues are. So it's, got, it's definitely an admixture of, uh, of membership. It has to be uh, Nigerians and foreigners. You know, we have the Red Cross. The Red Cross has said it was not part of the negotiation. The Red Cross was just on hand to administer first aid. But you, you know we had the Swiss authorities. Of course, they can't be all Swiss. From our end, it was led by the DSS. And I, I, I want to say they have done a human's job. They have done something that must be commended.